In this video, I'm making a 12th scale grandfather clock. This is a very specific piece, so this video might be quite long. Get comfortable and we'll begin. One of my patrons has a very particular grandfather clock, and I took it as a challenge to try and reproduce it just from these reference photographs. I started by sketching out by eye the design to try and get a rough idea of the scale. I figured the clock face would be a little bit difficult to get correct, so I pulled apart a two pound watch I found in a bargain store and just painted out the, uh, the text of the brand in the center. And then had the incredibly unenvious task of trying to glue the hands back on the face. Instead of using wood, I'm going to build this using many layers of cardstock to the different thicknesses I want and stain them. Main reason being is I want to design the clock on the computer and get it cut out using a cricket. And obviously wood won't go through the cricket, but heavy cardstock will. A cricket, by the way, is one of these printers that's actually got a blade in it, so it cuts out shapes for you. I'll, I'll put a link just above there. These things are absolutely fascinating. I love watching them cut shapes out. And here it is cutting into my faux wood effect, which is just paint on top of the cardstock. I'll put a link in how that's done just above. And once cut, you just peel away and you're left with your perfect shapes. The faux wood version can be a little more challenging as the blade doesn't always go through to the bottom. But the secret is you take a craft knife and just very gently, slowly and easily pick your way through the joins. Just in case you're wondering, if you can put something much thicker like artboard through a Cricut, I'll save you the trouble. As you can see here, it really doesn't work. There's a lot of pilling and the blade, even on the deepest setting, doesn't go through to the, uh, to the other side. And so uh, it makes it very difficult to work with. So here we are with all our cutout pieces and we've got several copies of the same thing so that we can stack it up and laminate it just like uh, just like real ply is done so we'll organize that into uh, various parts and give us some space and we'll start stacking that together saving our faux veneer for the top layer the side panels with the delicate window I'm only going to have two layers because I want that to be quite thin. I don't want the windows to, to look too deep. I'm using wood glue and the key here is to be uh, careful to make sure you've got coverage but keep it as thin as possible so that it doesn't spill out. Because if it spills out it's very difficult to paint the edges when it's dry. Next to the panels I go over the top of the delicate side windows. This is to give a, a raised edge and we want that to be quite deep so I'm using several layers of cardstock before I put the uh, fake veneer on the top of that one. While that's drying we'll move on to the front door which has a few layers to stick together. And it's got a very thin edge, so I'm being very careful with the glue. And very careful to make sure it all lines up. And 
Moving on to the outer frame at the front that the door is going to attach to. I won't record everything, but needless to say, these little, little bits are really quite difficult. Um, I always use just a standard pin to hold them down when I'm trying to glue them. And here they are, next morning, nice and dry. It's just worth saying to keep them flat overnight. I put a big heavy weight on the top, which was a ream of paper, just to make sure that the glue didn't start trying to curl them at the edges. I'm very happy with the edges, um, always going to need a little bit of sanding, it's always going to be out slightly, but that's come out really nice and tidy. I'm using 240 grit sandpaper, which to be quite honest as we're using paper is quite brutal, so always be soft and gentle when you're trying to sand down carbon paper. Now because we've got layers you can see a white edge so we're going to have to stain those so I'm just putting some pins into a piece of card so that I've got a, a riser that our um, various doors and things can sit on and I can paint the edge without it sticking to the bottom. The other thing I totally forgot was uh, you're possibly going to see both sides of these pieces of wood so we're going to have to actually do wood stain effect on the fly, whereas it would have been a lot easier if I'd have cut out another faux veneer that I could have just stuck to the underside. But you live and learn. Forgot to mention earlier, I'm using a teak satin stain for this wood effect. Now I'm moving on to the crown and that's got a very very delicate lip so I've got two layered up pieces here but one is actually smaller than the other and it's going to fit over the top with ever such a little bevel around the edge. And I'm going to apply the glue very very small amounts using this metal spatula spade thing. I have absolutely no idea where it came from but it's ideal for the job. And if that wasn't fiddly enough, I'm now trying to apply these uh, raised decorative edges. And that's most of the crown done. You can see at the points there it's got some jaggedy edges but we're just going to use uh, 120 grit sandpaper and we should be able to make a nice straight line out of that. Okay, now we're going to assemble the main parts and I'm going to give a very light sanding with 240 grit so that uh, it's got a bit of a key so that when we glue it we know it's going to um, stick in place.
and we're nearly ready to assemble the main panels but just before we do I'm going to use my little metal spade tool to just go along all the creases to make sure there's no glue sticking out or rough bits so we can see now there's a few pieces there isn't quite an even stain so I'm just going to go over everything to make sure all the edges and stuff are consistent Okay, let's start gluing it together and I'll start with the crown on the front. Hmm, it's being a bit of a slippery little fellow while it's drying, so I think I'm going to have to hold it together using clothes pegs. It's amazing the little things you forget on a project like this. Um, I'm going to paint a little square of gold that goes behind the clock face because there's actually an arch at the top and I need something for the clock face to stick to anyway. Next to think about are the delicate columns on the front. So I've got some cocktail skewers here and again it's a bit of an experiment but I'm going to glue them together and just see if that gives us an effect we like. Hmm. Now, do I hold these together while drying? Ah, masking tape. Now, the glass panels on the actual full-size piece are beveled, and I don't have a clue how to make bevel glass. So, for this, I'm going to use uh, an offcut here of overhead projector film, which seems ideal and a knife goes through it like a knife through butter i'm going to glue it on using wood glue um i've seen that if you use super glue it will seep across and put a horrible smudginess onto your glass That's now dried and in place and looks pretty good and I've done it to the side panels as well. So now let's assemble it all together. So I'm starting with the base square where all the panels are going to glue to. And I'm just using a very thin layer of super glue for this. So far so good. I'm not going to put the top and the back on just yet because I want to get the, uh, the clock face stuck in. I don't want to make that difficult for ourselves. So that'll need a little bit of trimming to be able to slide in there. Now we'll try and take some accurate measurements because we're going to stick the clock face gold panel 
and when we put it in we want it to be exactly in the middle of that glass panel. I've cut a few pieces to make the base step. Now, these are important to get as accurately as you can because this will determine if the grandfather clock stands upright or not. Let's just use a little spirit level on the top just to see how accurately we are standing up. It's pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and glue the front panel on. So this is going to take some adjustment to get it level. So I'm using another thin bit of card just as a, just as a wedge in places left, right and centre um, while it dries. Now that's dry, I'm just going to attach the, the next step out. And once again in my infinite wisdom, I've realised there's an area I've forgotten to paint, which is the gold on the back of the clock face, as it can be seen through the windows. So it's a little bit more awkward, but I'm going to have to paint that in situ now. So while that's drying, we'll jump back to our columns. If you remember those skewers we glued together earlier, they should be dry now. So let's cut them open and have a look. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. They're all stuck together. Just needs a bit of light sanding before we measure up and see if we can fit them in place. And with the help of Sophia, we'll cut the ends to suit. By the cringe, this is actually quite a bit tougher than expected. And after a bit of sanding, we can sit it in place just to make sure it fits before we move on to the next stage. So we need a bit of architectural shaping in this rather than just being straight columns end to end. Um, so another experiment, I'm getting out my trusty uh, Dremel tool, rotary tool, and I'm basically going to see if I can just sand out a couple of scallop shapes along the length. I'm painting the uh, scalloped bits that I've done now with antique gold. The rest of it will be painted the same wood as the rest of the unit. While that dries, let's move on to the pendulum mechanism on the inside. I've started by already gluing some coins behind the clock to give it sort of the look of a case and I'm using a 
another piece of wooden skewer to, uh, to become the pendulum and it needs a weight on the end which I'm just using another old coin that I found lying around which is 10 grozzy whatever 10 grozzy is mm, looks polish to me first thing I'm doing with our pendulum weight is to get rid of the coin design when we paint it I'm actually filling the entire front with super glue and this will actually dry in a pattern so it'll look like um, a designed disc rather than a painted coin so some other parts I've assembled together here a bit of plastic tube and these connectors and what I'm going to do is cut the tops off of each one of these connectors and glue them to the top of the plastic tube which will be cut up and that will become the pendulum weights we need these tubes filled so they're not open when we paint them so I'm using Yoohoo and I'm going to put a drop at either end and hopefully that sets with a domed or flat end and while the glue dries we'll move on to staining the columns And while that's drying, we'll jump back to the pendulum. You see now that the glue has dried, this was super glue. It's kind of puckered up in the middle and gives quite an interesting design. I'd be interested to see what it looks like when we paint over it. Now these skewers aren't necessarily the smoothest thing in the world. And this piece we're using for the pendulum arm is a little bit rough on one edge. We're gonna make sure that's at the back so it can't be seen. Um, so let's glue the uh, pendulum weight onto the skewer. With that dry, we'll give it a painting in antique gold. We'll also paint the weights now that the glue is dried. Um, off camera, I've actually attached the little metal rings on the top as they were quite fiddly. And I'm sure you didn't want to watch me holding a metal piece in place for minutes at a time. Although our door on the front doesn't open, we want it to look like it opens, so I'm going to attach some fake hinges down the side to give a suggestion of that. And um, I'm just simply going to make this out of a bit of gold wire, and I'm going to cut into very small sections and just stick at three particular places along the edge. Okay, so I'm going to super glue these pieces onto the edge. And it needs to be ever such a little bit of super glue. Um, we don't want any of it to leak out and make a horrible blobby mess. And if we've got a hinge on one side, I suppose we're going to need a little uh, lock mechanism on the other side. So. I've got this piece of scrap gold and I'm going to somehow cut an incredibly small little lock plate out of it. As you can see, it's ridiculously small and I'm just going to stick that in place again with a minute amount of super glue. Okay, I'm going to cut a pinhead and attach it because although the original doesn't have a handle, 
I just want to use a little bit of artistic license in our model to suggest that's the side the hinge opens. Okay, this is really fiddly to get this in the right place, but we've got a few moments. The super glue takes about 30 seconds to set, so we can wiggle backwards and forwards and get it exactly in the right place. And as a final touch, with a very fine tipped Sharpie type pen, um, I'm going to press quite hard and make a little uh, keyhole. The columns are now ready to be stuck, so we'll do that with a little bit of super glue on each edge and put those delicately in place. It's really starting to look quite good. Now the crown has a very delicate little piece in the middle at the top there, which is like a little plinth with a ball on the top. This is the bit I've been dreading because I'm not very good with minutiae. So I'm cutting out uh, from a bit of scrap board an ever so little square that I'm gonna put the ball on the top. And the ball is simply a plastic bead from a hairband. And there we are, and I'm very happy with that. Now I've noticed I've got my grubby little fingerprints all over the, the faux glass. So I'm going to clean that with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. So the weights are now all painted up and look fine. I've now got to figure out a way of how I'm actually going to attach these. Hmm. I don't want them free hanging because you just guarantee that I'll just get tangled up and look a mess if it's ever it's moved or dropped. So I think I'm going to actually glue them to the end of the pendulum and then I'm going to attach uh, something that represents the chain that goes around each one. Um, and what I've got for this is gold thread and the beauty of this particular gold thread is it's got a bit of texture to it so it actually looks like little gold links. We'll attach a spot of super glue to one end and just let the other end free for now and we'll, we'll worry later how we're going to actually make it look taut. Right, with the glue fixed and we've got all the lines leading out, I'm going to glue each one of these weights 
to the pendulum itself and I'm going to put them on varying heights. So we'll just hold that in place. So it's a little bit fiddly, but I want to get a get an idea if we are on the right track or not. And yeah, that, that's looking quite good. The next bit I really haven't thought through properly. So um, we're definitely in pioneering experimental land here. Uh, what I want to do is pull the threads out and keep them taut. So I've created a little a uh, little square of card which I'll trim up later and I'm gonna I'm gonna glue them taut against that but I've got to get the height right um, so that they run exactly parallel with the pendulum so I'm using just little blobs of blue tack to try and build up the layers to make it level and now I'm tweezing out each individual line and pulling it with a little bit of tension to keep it straight and while holding it taut I'm going to add a little drop of super glue and hopefully that should retain a nice straight line. Now I'm happy they're all taut I'm going to reinforce each one with a lot more glue. I didn't quite get the parallel lines right the pendulum arm is offered a bit of an angle um, but no worry I'm going to glue um, another bit of uh, card stock to raise that up and then I'm going to glue the pendulum arm to that Right, now I'm going to attach the pendulum to the clock mechanism and I'm going to use contact adhesive for this because it's quite a fiddly space and I want to just be able to put it in and I'll have to hold it for a while. Wow, by Joe's, that looks like it's worked. So it's time to encase everything inside by putting the back panel on. So let's put a thin dab of glue all the way around the back edge. And to make sure that stays completely flat, I'm going to use my trusty weight and leave that overnight, ready for the big reveal in the morning. But hang on a minute, we're not quite done. Because remember, this is for one of my patrons. So we're going to need this little device. Uh, 
And why do we need this little device? Because how else is she going to open the packing crate?